Good morning and God bless you. We're delighted to have you with us here this morning. Perhaps this is your first time tuning in and joining us. We extend a warm welcome to you and trust that you're blessed with what you hear today. We want to begin with prayer. There is so much to pray about. We want to pray for the condition and the direction of our world and our nation. We want to remember our local community and region. We also want to remember Cornerstone Pentecostal Church and lastly, our brothers and sisters around the world. Maybe you have a special and spoken request. It's a perfect time to make that known unto God. Let's pray together. Father, we love you, we praise you, and we worship you. Father, we pray for the condition and the direction of this great nation. Father, we pray for the influence of the Word of God, the Spirit of God, and the Church of the Living God upon our nation and our world. Father, we also pray for our local community and region and pray that you'll continue to open up doors of influence and utterance. We remember Cornerstone Pentecostal Church and ask that the windows of heaven be open you pour out your divine favor upon your people here. And lastly, we pray for our brothers and sisters around the world. Pray that you furnish them with a hedge of protection. We ask all these things in the name above every name, the name of Jesus Christ, and everybody said amen. I want to direct your attention this morning to the book of Philippians, one of the jailhouse letters. We want to go to Philippians chapter number one and starting in verse number three. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you, in all making requests with joy. For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. I want to read that verse one more time. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. I want to simply entitle this this morning, A Work in Progress. A Work in Progress. As I've already mentioned, this is one of the jailhouse letters of the Apostle Paul. Incredible letter that we find here um, to the Philippians. And in this particular passage of scripture, I personally have found great encouragement and comfort in this scripture because it lets me know personally that God is not done. God is still at work. And I think that oftentimes people get to a place where they might get uh, they, they reach a pothole on the road of spiritual development. And for a lot of people, because they have no clue what freedom and liberty and God working in their life looks like, they don't have a reference point. For some people, that is a time to throw their hands up in the air and to go back to things in the world that are more familiar and predictable. But I want to encourage you this morning that God is at work and will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. We interpret that latter part of that verse to mean at his appearing, the rapture of the church, his appearing, his coming for his bride, that up until that point, there's going to continue to be a work of God in my life if I will let him. You know, there's another verse in the scripture where Jesus is talking about a man that is considering building a tower. And Jesus said that it's best to count the cost before building a tower. There's a reason why I believe Jesus used the illustration of a tower, and it's because everybody could see it. 
It's something that's highly visible to all people. And to not finish what you have started to where everybody can see it um, could be problematic. Um, how many of you have seen a house or a business or a commercial project where there is a building that started, the foundation is dug out, the foundation is poured, they begin to put the steel together, they begin to go up, and then all of a sudden it seems like the work stops. Either they lack funds, they lack workers, they lack funding, uh, whatever the situation may be, but it sits there for all to see that there is something that is incomplete. Well, I want to encourage you in contrast to that, in stunning contrast to that, that we can be confident that if we will allow God, that he is at work and will perform it, will complete it up until the time of the return of Jesus Christ. I want to tell you, that is a great comfort to first-generation apostolics. It's really a comfort to all of us. But to those that have been raised in the church, oftentimes they have family members or, or grandparents, parents, whatever, that they understand. That's kind of a, a, a tremendous encouragement and a guardrail for their own development. And I, and I honor that. It's a wonderful thing. But to those of us that are first-generation apostolics, I want you to take heart in this today, to not give up, to not throw in the towel, to not go back to the predictability and the familiarity of sin, but I want you to stay the course and realize that God is at work, being confident of this very thing. God bless you. Thank you for joining us here this morning. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow.